Hello, welcome to a new tutorial presented by the SHR TV. <coughs> In this tutorial, we are going to see the bones of the lower limb. Now, let's visualize the bones of the lower limb. At first point, we need to know the general overview of the bones of the lower limb. The lower limb consists of the great pelvic bone. After the great pelvic bone, you need to know that this all this is the pelvic gyrus. When the bone combine all through like that, it's going to be the pelvic gyrus. So this is the pelvic bone, and this is a great iliac. This is a great iliac bone here, which is when it's not used with sacrum. When it's used with sacrum, it's the pelvic bone. Next point, you have the femur here. After the femur, you have the tibia, the fibula, the tarsals, metatarsals and the phalanges so let's visualize each of the bones <coughs> we start by visualizing the different bones in the um, in the in the pelvic in the pelvic bone so number one bone here is going to be the iliac bone so all of the bones are going to fuse to give the pelvic bone so now let's start with the uh, iliac bone so we start by finding it parts so the parts of the iliac bone are, are seen as such. <coughs> so number one point you must have need to know that when you see the pelvic bone anteriorly, it's shown as this, and when it's seen posteriorly, it's shown as this. Now anteriorly, you have this, the ala of the ilium. Now after the having the ala of the, this is this is the the, the ala of the ilium. So the ilium is the bone which is formed, which is formed due to the combination of three bones. We have the the um, this one is the iliac bone this one is the pubis and this one is the issue so this ilium or the iliac bone is formed due to the ilio the, the this iliac bone this particular bone here is the pubis and this one is issue so all this you have the ilium so or the innominate bone so now when all of them are going to fuse if it's fused with the sacrum it now forms the pelvic bone or the pelvic gilder now let's see what the, the the ilium looks like so the ilium we have at this portion we have here we have the anterior iliac spine we have the anterior superior iliac spine and if this is superior they must have an inferior, inferior one so this is an anterior inferior iliac spine so at this portion here we have the pelvic the, the, the pubic eminence here we have the pubic eminence at this portion here so we have this accurate line, accurate, accurate line to which connect this per the, the ilium portion to the pubis. Now at this zone here is a facet for articulation of with the, the femoral head. So this is a facet for articulation of the femoral head. Now this facet of articulation of femoral head has a facet portion and has a connective tissue portion which are contain fat, um, which contain um, fats here. And at this connective tissue portion, we have here the ligament at the fovea of the femoral head is going to run into here. Now, going to the pubis portion, we have this portion here, which is going to be called the superior pubic hammy, and this portion here is going to be called the inferior pubic hammy, and here you are having the pubic body. At the level of the pubic body, you are going to have the pubic uh, the pubic tubercle. Here it will be the two pubic tubercle and the pubic crest. So all are the this is with respect to the pubic bone. Now we have another bone posteriorly. We have another bone posteriorly, the ischial bone. Now, the ischial bone is made up of a. This is the body of the ischial bone. Now, you need to know that this part of the body of the ischial bone is going to be ischial spine. This portion here is going to be the ischial spine. This is the body of ischial bone, which consists of the ischial spine. And this portion here, where this portion is the portion of the bone which supports your um, your your weight when you are seated. So it has to be very tough. And this portion is called the, um, due to its toughness, it's going to be called the ischial tuberosity. Now, at this portion, you see that this portion is going to supply that po the, the particular portion. You see that this is the body and supplying one of the portion which are going to be which are going to be um, lined by the femoral head. Here, at this portion, we have the ramus of the ischium. So this is the ramus of the ischium. Now, coming posterior to the iliac bone, we realize that. We have um, issue um, coming posterior to the ilium, to iliac bone. You realize that you have this, 
and here at this portion here you have the posterior superior iliac spine here you have the anterior superior iliac spine here was the anterior inferior iliac spine here is inside the anterior this is the posterior superior iliac spine and the posterior inferior iliac spine here we are going to have the facet for articulation with the um, the sacral bone so you have all this and at this portion here you're going to have the uh, medial lip and the lateral lip with the intermediate lip and all of them are used for the articulation for for, for having origins for the gluteal muscles as we're going to see in the muscles of the lower limb so you finish all the you finish the issue bone so next let's find the next bone now The next one is the sacral bone. The sacral bone is just this simple bone, though it is much more complex. The sacral bone is consisting of these bones which are fused to the sacral bones which are fused together. And since they are fused together, we are going to have this um, posterior foramina. So these are the posterior intervertebral foramina, and this one anterior are the anterior intervertebral foramina. So this one, this portion here is going to be called the lateral part of the sacrum. And this also is also going to be called lateral part of the sacrum, but they are posterior. Now you have here the medial part of the sacrum having the different crests. Now this crest you have the intermediate um, crest and you have the lateral crest here. You have the median crest and you have the lateral crest. These crests are formed due to a fusion of the superior and the inferior articular facet, and due to the superior and inferior articular processes. On the lateral side of the sacrum, you can visualize facets which are going to articulate with the ilium, maybe the ilium that you have seen initially. And yes, superiorly, you have facet for articulation with the, the L5 vertebra, the lumbar vertebra 5. At this portion, you are going to have the intervertebral foramina through which your spinal cord is going to pass. But you know that the spinal cord is going to enter the level of um, L2 and L3. So since the spinal cord enters the level of L2 and L2, here is not going to contain the spinal cord, but it's going to contain the filum terminale. The filum terminale are the projection of the fiber from the first spinal cord, and it's also going to contain the um, the the um, the last portion of the meninges. The meninges continue downward with the filum terminale. So yeah, it's going to not con to contain the spinal cord, but to contain the um, the filum terminale and the dura mater of the meninges. So you have this at this point here. So now, after visualizing the sacrum, <coughs> we can now move and think about this particular. This one here, we initially said that is the ischial spine. <coughs> now, visualizing the ischial spine, you need to know that the ischial spine is going to have there is going to be a ligament between the sacrum and the ischial spine, and that ligament is going to be called the is going to be found posteriorly and going to be called the sacro is the the ischial sacral um, ligament or the sacro ischial ligament. So this ligament is going to be located in this direction. So that ligament is going to form what is going to be called the greater um, sciatic foramina. <clears throat> so we are going to have this great foramen here, that is the greater sciatic foramina. And now we are going to also have another one which is going to be formed. A ligament is also going to connect <clears throat> between the sacrum and the this part, the, 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 the ischial tuberosity. And that's going to be called the ischial tuberous ligament. And the between the, the ischial, the, the between the sacro um, ischial tuberosity, between the ischial the sacro ischial um, ligament and the sacro um, tuberous ligament, we are going to see that they we are going to have a space there. And that space is going to be called the lesser sciatic foramina. This one is going to be called greater sciatic foramina, and this one is going to be called lesser sciatic foramina. <coughs> so now we have visualized all <coughs> the pelvic bone. <coughs> now at this portion, we are going to have the pubic symphysis, when the, which is going to join the two pelvic bones together to form the pelvic gidea. <coughs> so now let's visualize the um, the humerus. Let's visualize the femur insert. So when we um, when we see the parts of the femur, the different parts of the femur, we can visualize the femur as a proximal, a middle part, and a distal part. So at the proximal part of the femur, what do we have? 
we have yeah we have the head of the femur we have here we have the neck of the femur now on the head of the femur the characteristic is that there is a certain small notch on the head of the femur called the fovea of the head of the femur and that fovea of the head of the femur is going to connect the ligament to the head of the femur and that ligament to the head of the femur is connecting the uh, the ilium bone to this uh, to the to the femur the head of the femur now after visualizing it, you have this next portion, the neck. The neck connects the head to the, the greater and the lesser tuberosity. Now, you visualize that here anteriorly, you can see anteriorly and laterally, you find what you call the greater tuberosity. And on this other portion, you find what you call the lesser tuberosity. So, you have the greater tuberosity and you have the lesser tuberosity, which could be found here. Now, again, this, are, this is what we can see on the um, on the so on the um, proximal side. Posteriorly, on the proximal side, you find this. You find the intertuberous crest. There's the intertuberous crest which can be found posteriorly on that other side. And anteriorly, you found the intertuberous line. Anterior is intertuberous line. Posterior is the intertuberous crest. That's the difference. Now, posteriorly again, you you are going to have a line which is come from, going to come from the from the um, <coughs> Um, the a line is going to come from the greater the lesser tuberosity and a line is also going to come from the greater tuberosity. The line which comes from the greater tuberosity is going to be called the the line which comes from greater tuberosity is going to be called the gluteal tuberosity. So and the line which comes from the lesser tuberosity is going to be called the linear is going to be called the um, the pectineal line. So this line here is going to be called the pectineal line. This is going to be going to call the gluteal tuberosity. So from there you already think that the insertion for the pectineus muscle is going to be at this line and insertion of the gluteal muscle is going to be on this line. The lines are going to fuse, are going to be connected together here to form the linear aspersa on the posterior aspect of the on the posterior aspect. You have the linear aspersa here, and on the distal aspect, they are going to come outward to form the supra. You have the lateral supracondylar and um, supra, and um, you have the lateral epicondyle, and you have the medial epicondyle. So, this line are going to come outward from the lateral and medial epicondyle. So, now you can visualize the distal part of the humerus. Now, this is the distal part of the humerus. Of the femur instead. Now, on the distal part of the femur, you have this one here, which is the lateral epicondyle, and this one here is the medial epicondyle. But now, the lateral here is much more prominent than the medial as compared with the humerus above in the upper limb. So, now here below, you can visualize what we see here. We have the <coughs> You have the um, median um, condyle. Here was the epicondyle, and here down is the condyle. This is the medial condyle, and this is the lateral condyle. Between, when, from posterior aspect, between the medial and lateral condyle, you can visualize what is called the intercondylar fossa. So you have the intercondylar fossa here, and posteriorly here, you have a small fossa also. So you could just see from here, we visualize all the different parts of the femur. You can now pass to the next bone. Now the next bone is a tibia. So to find the parts of the tibia, we need to know to divide the part of the tibia into proximal, a medial, and a distal portion. So on the proximal portion, you see above here, above on the, t the on the tibia, you have the um, condylar facet, the facet for the condyle. You have the this one here is medial and this one is lateral. So this one is for medial epicondyle, this one is for lateral epicondyle. And here you have the condylar intercondylar ridge. Instead, on the other on the on the femur, you had the intercondylar intercondylar um, fossa but here you have instead have the intercondylar ridge now on the anterior view you see something here and this one is a patella tuberosity or you can cause also call the tibial tuberosity so this tibial tuberosity is also is going to connect to the patella ligament so you have a patella above it's going to connect to that patella ligament there is um, um 20 percent or to 30 percent population does not have the patella so it's not really important to do it as a bone of the lower limb so we also have this facet here this facet here is for articulation with the fibula so these are the main things to be known now we have uh, upon going now on this part here on this um the on the middle part you need to know that there exist borders this is the medial border this is the lateral border and this is the medial border this is the lateral border and this is um, the um, anterior border it exists as a pyramid just as in the horn or on and the radius so you have this and on the distal end you see this 
this end here is going to articulate with the muscle with the um, car power bone which is located on the lower limb as we're going to see now see here is going to be the the, the conjure it's still like the honor conjure but here is not going to be called conjure it's still like honor steroid process but here is not going to be called steroid process instead it's going to be called the malleolus now seeing the tibia is located much more medial than lateral is going to be called the medial malleolus and they will they still the process which is going to come from the from the part the from the um from the uh, fibula is going to be called the lateral malleolus so let's go to the next bone the next bone is the fibula so the fibula is has a head for articulation of the tibia after the head you have the body the body is still pyramidal anterior middle and lateral lateral you have anterior middle posterior borders the the medial border is going to form the interosseous membrane with the lateral border of the tibia we have again at this portion the lateral malleolus at this portion here this is the lateral malleolus and the lateral malleolus is much more prominent than the medial malleolus so now we have this now these other bones here so this other bone this bone here is a talus so the carpal bones are divided now into into now into three rows it's different from the the, the tarsal bone divided into three rows different from the carpal bones which only divide into two rows now you have the this particular tarsal here this tarsal here is called the this this tarsal bone is called a talus you have the talus here and it articulates both with the tibia and the fibula and the fibula so this other um tarsal bone is going to be the calcaneus so this other one is going to be called the calcaneus so you have the talus here and you have the calcaneus at this position now anterior to the talus you need to know that um the next row this is the they form the first row of the of the the tarsal bone now the talus and the calcaneus the talus is lying on the calcaneus now on the next row you need to know that the the, the talus is going to articulate with one bone which is going to be called the navicular bone so this is the navicular bone that way is going to the talus is going to articulate the navicular bone while the calcaneus is going to articulate with this other bone called the cuboid bone now the uh, navicular bone articulate now with three of these other bones and these bones are called the cuneiform bone you have the medial cuneiform you have the intermediate cuneiform and you have the lateral cuneiform bones this cuboid and now the medial the intermediate and the lateral cuneiform are going to articulate with the first the second and the third digit they are going to articulate the first second and third digit the first one is going to be the um the big toe is going to articulate the big toe this is the second digit this is the third digit now for the um cuboid the cuboid which come from which article the calcaneus articulate with two of the digits the two lateral digits so this is why you realize that the two lateral digits are not easily movable by 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 a uh, wheel you cannot easily move the two lateral digits by by wheel but for the first and the second and third it can easily be moved so that's a clinical application so after seeing this you can visualize the next one which is um, the first tarsal you see the first tarsal is only characterized as having a um, a base in a in a, a body and a head so that's the same with all the tarsal so we realize again that just as a term the big toe has only two phalanges while the other have three phalanges so you can as you see that there are 14 phalanges at the level of the toe so there are going to be five um, five um, metatarsals and the tarsals are not eight in number but they are seven in number and then we must make sure that they are um, ordered in three rows the tarsals are ordered in three rows we have two here we have the first two then we have um, this next two we, then we have these three so this one is the one which is going to attribute these two so from here we finish with all the um, bones which are considered in the upper limb so we we'll say thanks for your kind attention and please don't forget to like and subscribe for the self video channel thank you